Brothers and sisters, the world has a large population. Some seven billion and more people live on this beautiful planet, which is broken more and more with each passing day. If we think of the two religions, Christianity and Islam, I think the followers of Christianity and Islam possibly make up almost half of the world's population. Then we have the Jews, the Hindus, the Buddhists, the Baha'is, the Zoroastrians, the Jains, and people of other faith traditions. If we put all these people of a faith and religious tradition together, we form a vast majority of the world's population. And if people of these religions and faiths fail to live together in harmony, this world has no hope. We have to and we must live together in harmony with our diverse religions and faiths with people of no religious or faith background so that this world can be beautiful, as beautiful as God had designed it to be. Let me focus on Christianity and Judaism. Christians and Jews were very much part and parcel of what we today may refer to as the Muslim world. Sadly, that part of the world has fewer and fewer of these two religious communities for political and for religious reasons. The emptying of these countries of their Christian populations is tragic. And I will not hesitate to say that Christianity was there first before Islam. The Christians were there before the Muslims. Certainly when we think of Islam in the way that it is understood today, taught by the Messenger Muhammad, peace be upon him. We look at Egypt. We look right across the region of that rich history of coexistence in harmony where people of different faiths under Muslim rule were able to flourish and contribute to civilization. The persecution of Christians in particular in these and I say so-called Muslim countries because if they were Muslim they would be much nicer to their Christian populations and to other minorities. It is heartbreaking. Egypt has a wonderful history of coexistence. Yet that is now under severe threat. The Coptic presence in Egypt, an ancient presence a presence of which Muslims around the world were proud of. Muhammad, peace be on him, himself married a Coptic lady from Egypt. Muslims should have a special relationship with Coptics because one of our mothers, the mother of the believers, was a Coptic lady the wife of the messenger Muhammad, peace be on him. And then we explore the Qur'an and how the Qur'an reminds us that your diversity of tongues, of cultures, of faiths, religions, of food and all the other diversity that you see around you is God's design. He is the most wonderful artist who created us 
in such diverse, beautiful ways. He tells us, if God so wished, he would have made us all the same. And how boring that would have been. <laughs> you just look around this gathering, beautiful people. You walk out into the park and you see the park full of different colored flowers. How beautiful it looks. If you were to walk into a park where all the flowers are just red, or just yellow, or just orange, I think was one of your colors, it would not look as pretty as that colorful garden. And that is what God wished for us. And it is up to us to ensure that we live with that color in peace and in harmony. God says, O oh people, we have made you from one man and from one woman. And we have made you into different nations, different tribes, different communities, so that you can encounter each other, engage one another, get to know each other, and enjoy that beauty of diversity. For the dearest of you in the eyes of God is the one who is most righteous, the one who does more good works, not the skin color, your social status, or any other yardstick that we measure each other with. The fact that our diversity was designed by God so that we stand up for each other. A verse in the Quran tells us, had it not been that people stand up for each other, when we see the oppressed, we stand up to their aid and we hold the hand of the oppressor. Had it not been for that instinct and desire within the human being, then you would have seen many a monastery, a church, a synagogue, and a mosque in which God is remembered much would be destroyed. I find this verse absolutely fascinating. That within one verse, the places of worship of these religions are mentioned with equal respect. Oh, how I wish Muslims all over the world would be able to embrace the spirit which the Quran teaches us. And my bishop will correct me if I get this wrong. But in Mark, we read Jesus said, is one of the greatest commandments to love your neighbor as yourself. Muhammad, peace be on him, said, you are not one of us. Any man, any woman who claims to be Muslim cannot be Muslim, he said, if your neighbor is not safe from your harm. We live in a global village. The whole world is our neighborhood. Every single human being is our neighbor. And the messenger Muhammad, peace be on him, said, you will not enter heaven. You will not enter paradise until you believe. And he said, you will not believe until you love one another. And he asked, shall I tell you about something which if you do will enable you to love each other? Afshu salama bainakum. He said, spread peace amongst yourselves. And it is not just that gesture of the Muslim saying, Assalamu alaikum. Lip service. It is the peace of the heart where the presence of every Muslim on this planet must be a source of peace. Then you will love one another. Then you will have believed. Then you will be with God in heaven in paradise. Thank you very much for your attention.